आतंकवाद धर्मांतरण लव जिहाद उसकी सच्चाइयाँ प्रकट करती है और जनता को देखना चाहिए क्या मध्य प्रदेश में रेडिकलाइजेशन एक प्रॉब्लम है मुख्यमंत्री जी मैं आपसे जानना चाहता हूं क्योंकि अभी एस पर भी भारत ने एक एजेंडा सेट किया है कि तीन चार जुलाई को जब बात होगी तब डी रेडिकलाइजेशन एक बहुत बड़ा इशू बनाया है एस के पटल पर प्रधानमंत्री ने काउंटर टेररिज्म और रेडिकलाइजेशन की बात की केरला स्टोरी में भी हम रेडिकलाइजेशन को देख रहे हैं मध्य प्रदेश में बहुत सारे एरेस्ट भी हुए हैं हाल फिलहाल में जो क्रैकडाउन हुआ है उसके कहीं ना कहीं तार आकर मध्य प्रदेश से जुड़ रहे हैं तो क्या ये एक समस्या है यहाँ लंबे समय तक मध्य प्रदेश सिमी का गढ़ रहा पूर्ववर्ती कांग्रेस की सरकारों ने उनको खाद और पानी दिया उनको मेहमा करने का काम किया हमने उस चक्र को उस दुष्चक्र को ध्वस्त करने का काम किया है फिर भी कुछ ना कुछ कहीं मामले आते हैं तो उन पे के खिलाफ कार्रवाई होती है एक बड़ी समस्या है जिसको पूरी तरह से समाप्त करने के लिए हम संकल्पबद्ध हैं ओंकारेश्वर इतना सुंदर है आपको कभी समय मिलता है अध्यात्म की तरफ थोड़ा सा समय बिताने के लिए थोड़ा सा टाइम देने के लिए ये सैलानी यहाँ पर आज ही आप आए हैं या आते रहते हैं नहीं नहीं जो ये जो टापू अभी आप आया लेकिन इसको जब बनाने की हमने कल्पना की थी तब मैं आया था कैसे टापू डेवलप किए जाए हनुमंतिया सैलानी गांधी सागर बरगी बाण सागर कई जगह हम ये वाटर टूरिज्म उसको डेवलप करने का काम कर रहे हैं लेकिन फुर्सत ऐसे नहीं मिलती कि आराम से आकर रह लें एक आ, हमारे दर्शकों से आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे मध्य प्रदेश आते रहें टूरिज्म के लिए आध्यात्मिक देखिए अद्भुत है मध्य प्रदेश यहाँ दो ज्योतिर्लिंग है और दोनों को जोड़ के हम एक दिव्य क्षेत्र बना रहे हैं महाकाल महालोक और ओंकारेश्वर जुड़ के एक दिव्य तीर्थ क्षेत्र भी बनेंगे और आध्यात्मिक उन्नति के साथ भौतिक प्रगति का भी साधन बनेंगे यहाँ की अनुभूति अद्भुत है यहाँ की हवाओं में ओम नमः शिवाय ऐसा घुला मिला है कि आते ही मन आनंद और प्रसन्नता से भर जाता है लेकिन यहाँ और चाहे राम राजा लोग जहाँ बना रहे हैं यहाँ मैहर है यहाँ की देवी सबको आशीर्वाद शारदा मैया सबको आशीर्वाद देती सलकनपुर है देवास में चामुंडा मैया है जालपा माता है भादवा माता है यहाँ केवल पशुपतिनाथ भी है मंदसौर में यहाँ चित्रकूट में वनवासी भगवान राम 11 साल 11 महीने 11 दिन विराजे हैं अनोखे और अद्भुत मंदिर भी हैं यहाँ पुरातत्व की दृष्टि से खजुराहो देख लीजिए भीम का देख लीजिए सांची देख लीजिए ये वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज है और यहाँ वाइल्ड लाइफ टूरिज्म देख लीजिए एक ही चेतना सब में है तो हमने शेरों को भी संभाल के रखा है टाइगर्स को हाँ टाइगर्स को भी संभाल के रखा है अब चीते भी आ गए हैं हाँ हमारे यहाँ तेंदुए भी है लेपर्ड हमारे यहाँ बल्चर भी बचे हुए हैं हमारे यहाँ घड़ियाल भी है अद्भुत प्रदेश है ये यहाँ का जो टूरिज्म है वो अद्भुत है तो केवल टूरिज्म के लिए नहीं धार्मिक पर्यटन के लिए भी आए और स्वच्छता में तो मध्य प्रदेश नंबर एक है ही जी तो वो देखने भी मध्य प्रदेश आए बिल्कुल जाते जाते आखिरी प्रश्न आपसे पूछूंगा मुख्यमंत्री जी आपने वल्चर्स की बात की कुछ सियासी वल्चर्स हैं जो कहते हैं कि मामा जी को रिटायर कर देना चाहिए <laughs> मामा जी को अब रेस्ट करने की आवश्यकता है या फिर अब मामा जी को उतना सपोर्ट नहीं मिल रहा पार्टी के अंदर से कितनी बार मुख्यमंत्री रहेंगे उन सब आप क्या कहना चाहेंगे फैसला जनता करती है और मेरे बारे में फैसला पार्टी करती है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप शिवराज सिंह बहुत 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 धन्यवाद थैंक यू Hello and welcome to Brass Tax I'm Zakhar Jacob the movie the Kerala story is making waves both at the box office and on social media at the box office it's already collected 35 crores on the opening weekend which is big for a small movie without any big movie stars but it's also turning out to be a lightning rod in the political discourse the state of bengal has now decided to ban the film while in tamil nadu distributors are refusing to exhibit the film in what is construed as an unofficial boycott of sorts why is there this resorting to a ban culture if you don't like the movie don't watch the movie but how does banning anything whether it is a movie or a book help solve any problem that's what we will focus on brass tax but first the story so far पर ले जाना और फिर गलत रास्ते में धकेल देना ये इसको उजागर करता है 
this will help us to you know create more awareness and restrict the drive of recruitment drive of this uh, terrorist organization why not i don't think there is any need to do any politics on this especially you know bjp is uh, doing uh, politics and trying to divide people i will request the state government chief minister very sad that your party is working with bjp and with that that bjp is showing the kerala files a distorted stories lakhs of people have seen the film in bengal theaters are running house full people are watching the film in big numbers So the movie The Kerala Story was released last Friday and it's already created quite a stir in Kerala despite the high court refusing to stay the release of the film there were multiple protests by youth groups Kerala's ruling CPIM and opposition congress have accused the filmmakers of deliberately exaggerating and peddling a hidden agenda Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan has said that propaganda films are simply a bid by the right wing to make inroads in Kerala In neighboring Tamil Nadu, multiplexes in the state have stopped screening the Kerala story after protests in a few cities by Muslim political groups and other political parties, including the Nam Tamil Kachchi. The Tamil Nadu Theatre and Multiplex Owners Association claims the decision was taken to maintain law and order and to protect the, the cinema halls. Now, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has announced that the film will not be screened in the state in order to avoid any untoward incident or any incident of hatred and violence and to maintain peace in the state. Mamta Banerjee claims that the film was created to defame the entire state of Kerala. But what is the fuss around Kerala story all about? What is the film's script and its storyline? The trailer of the film claims that there are more than 30,000 women in Kerala who were converted and inducted into ISIS. But last week the promo was changed uh, to the true stories of three young girls from different parts of Kerala. The film is also about alleged radicalization and conversion of young Hindu women to Islam in Kerala that they were trapped by love jihad. The movie shows that these young women go missing, they are later inducted into the terrorist outfit the Islamic State. Now last week Prime Minister Modi brought up the Kerala story during his campaign in Karnataka and accused the Congress of bowing to terror groups. Us Kerala ke mein chal rahi आतंकी साजिश का खुलासा ये केरला स्टोरी फिल्म में उसे किया गया है कांग्रेस आज समाज को तहस नहस करने वाली इस आतंकी प्रवृत्ति के साथ खड़ी हुई नजर आ रही है In while the movie has set the box office on fire on day 1 of its release that is the 5th of May last Friday the Kerala story earned about 8 crores the following day the film minted about 11 crores of the box office and then there has been a steady growth of about 30% the Kerala story earned 16 crores on Sunday the film is all set to be a hit with a budget of just 40 crores it's already made 35 crores in 3 days of the opening weekend I want to first go across to Vipul Shah who's the producer of this film the maker of this film thank you very much Mr Shah for uh, joining us uh we've just got the information today that uh, Mamata Banerjee the West Bengal chief minister has decided not to allow the broadcast of your movie saying that it's propaganda that it's detrimental to law and order in the state how would you respond to Bengal and the Bengal chief minister's decision to ban your movie in that state So the simple thing is that the movie has been running for last three and a half days, and it has been running to pack houses. Thousands and thousands of people have seen the film in Bengal already, and there is not a single incidence of any kind of disturbance. And when I got the got the news, I immediately checked with my distributor that is there any kind of disturbance because of which a sudden disturbance which has led to this kind. and he said he checked with all the theater owners and he came back to me and he said no there is nothing of that sort okay so i am not able to understand that for <laughs> three and a half days if the film has done successfully and peacefully and people have loved it and emotionally connected it with it on a such a big level uh, then i don't understand how 
suddenly it has become a law and order disturbance. Uh, I am not able to understand it. Maybe okay. you can explain it to me. But tell tell me, Mr. Shah, what is also being cited? It's not just Bengal which has now banned your movie, but also states like Tamil Nadu, where there seems to be an unofficial ban because theatre owners are saying uh, there is no footfalls, uh, they don't want to take a chance, etc. Uh, the reasons that are being cited by these folks is yours is a propaganda movie, it demonizes one state, it demonizes one entire community, and potentially it could lead to some kind of violence. What do you have to say to that? Uh, we've made it clear, amply clear, time and again, that this film is not against any community, any religion, or even the state of Kerala. It's against none. It's against terror. And if I thought that when we are making this kind of a film, we'll be applauded for exposing the terror network, showing the courage to expose the terror network at this level with such honesty and such boldness. But instead of that, now we are being told that we are a propaganda film. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to answer to that. The only answer I can think of is that go and see those females who are coming out of the cinema hall and crying and connecting with the problem. And they, there are so many stories. Uh, day before yesterday, on Saturday, there was a woman in the in one of the theatres in Goregaon. She got so emotional that the film had to be stopped for 10 minutes because her daughter went through a similar situation. Okay. And she had to be consoled. And once she calmed down, the film restarted. Now, a propaganda film, I'm sure you will understand, cannot have this kind of a real connect. That's my only answer as a filmmaker. Okay. That you, when your film is genuinely connecting with the people of the nation, it cannot be a propaganda film. We've seen in the past, propaganda films come and they mushroom for a weekend and then they disappear. But, yeah. but not the case with this film. Today, the number of people watching this film is much higher than Friday. So so the, the, the other point that the critics of this uh, film say is that, you know, what is being depicted in the film is far away from reality and the truth is there might be a few hundred cases of people converting or being converted forcibly to Islam and then being taken to fight for ISIS in Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, etc. But you make it a completely absurd and exaggerated claim that there are more than 30,000 such cases. So what the reality is and what you have portrayed, are one is an exaggerated version of the other. How do you respond to that? See, what happened is that that was the only argument they had against the film before the film released, right? And in three and a half days, there are millions of reactions from various people on social media where nobody has talked about 32,000 number or number is less or more. What they are saying is that, oh my God, if this is happening in our own country, we need to stand up and protect our daughters. So the film is connecting with people on a human level. Now, when that propaganda did not get the de desired result, maybe showing a law and order situation is another way to, uh, you know, kind of okay. stop us from showing the film to millions of people who want to see the film. Uh, that's what I think. And I don't know how else to respond to these constant allegations, which mean nothing actually. All They're right. just thrown at us to discredit us. Okay. Uh, these allegations have been thrown at you to discredit you. Uh, we leave it at that, Vipul Shah. Thank you very much for speaking with us here on Brass Tax. Uh, we'll see how your movie continues to do, both at the box office and, of course, uh, on social media chatter. Meanwhile, let's open this up to our panelists who are joining us because clearly this has now become political with Bengal deciding to ban the screening of this film. In Tamil Nadu, distributors and exhibitors are loath to screening this film. So is there an unofficial and sometimes even an official ban that's being played out in the case of the Kerala story? Ajay Alok is BJP spokesperson, will be joined in a moment by Babul Supriyo, who is a cabinet minister in the state of Bengal. Uh, Professor Dinesh Varshini is leader of the CPI. Uh, Ajay Alok, uh, again, the point that Mamta Banerjee made when she uh, announced this evening that she's banning this film is that this is a propaganda movie and it demonizes one community and an entire state and she can't afford to have law and order situation bases a movie, therefore she's banning it. Does that reasoning and that rationale cut ice? If it doesn't, why? Well, I guess uh, 
Mamta Banerjee thinks that she is superior than Supreme Court. When Supreme Court refused to ban, and then she decides to ban. So I think it's a classical case of Muslim appeasement, where she's scared of CPM and Congress that they shouldn't eat the vote share of Muslims. Mm -hmm. So to to just to get out of it and to show that how much sympathy she has for the sect, uh, sect she decided to ban it, anticipating that the entire Muslim votes will come into her pocket. Like what Congress is doing in Karnataka, she did it in West Bengal. Like what Stalin did it in Tamil Nadu. So this is the whole problem of Muslim appeasement. See, this is this is not terrorism where you listen to that bomb bomb scare or some gunshots or people being killed. This is yeah. silent terrorism. This is silent social terrorism which is happening in the country. And Kerala's story is just a name. It's not a, it's not happening in one state. It's happening everywhere, particularly in West Bengal. Mm -hmm. Mamta Banerjee knows this that this is happening, and if this movie is screened regularly on a regular basis, what impact we, it will have among Hindu society, among Christian society, because it's not only Hindus who are being suffered; even the Christian minority are being suffered, and it's not only India. It's happening at the simultaneously. It's happening in India, UK, New Zealand, Fiji, Germany, US, everywhere. There's a okay. Company. So let me ask like, uh, uh, Professor Dinesh Varshney, you know, Ajay Alok has a point in as much as the Supreme Court uh, was moved last week to for an urgent hearing to stay the release of this film. The court refused to intervene. The matter went to the Kerala High Court. Again, a detailed hearing happened. And one of the judges who was hearing that matter basically said, if you don't want to watch the movie, don't watch the movie. Uh, but uh, don't, you know, you, there's no question of banning a movie. Whenever there is a ban on anything, a movie or a book, left parties like yourself are the first to jump saying, what does a ban achieve? Now, will you say the same thing? Look, Jakka, this is a question of understanding the thing in perspective. As and when the election comes, the toolkit of the BJP RSS becomes active. And unfortunately, the prime minister of the country himself is giving a statement of promoting the film, which is the life story of the Kerala. You yourself has asked a question to the toolkit of Bipin Shah, that earlier he was saying 32,000, now he said three. Are Baba, three can I even join from Maharashtra? Did it from the Dhruv Saxena of ISI, agent of RSS in Madhya Pradesh, Balram and Madhya Pradesh, in, Ma in UP, okay. in Punjab, everywhere. What is this? And do you see, do you mean to say, shall we allow to disturb the communal harmony of the Kerala or Bengal or any other state? No, this but, but fact is, is sir, this movie has been running BJP across... RSS, sir, sir, once again, this movie, this, 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 this movie has been running in Bengal and in other Kerala, parts of the country is, for the last three days. So far, I have not heard of any reported incidents of violence. But let me, let me also bring in uh, Babul Supriyo. I believe uh, his line is just being patched through. Uh, he's a cabinet minister in the state of West Bengal. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Supriyo, for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. Uh, what is the rationale of banning a movie that's already playing in the screens for the last three days? And as far as I can tell, there have been no uh, instances of violence, either in Kolkata or any other part of Bengal. So why has the chief minister and your state government decided to ban this movie today? Well, you see, you're talking about the three-day thing, three-day silence or the act being taken up for three days. I can give you a very easy example of uh, Amit Shah speaking about Manipur after three days. He was silent for three days when some people wanted to hear some words of Asher and Stroma. But that's not the topic of the debate today. I think that, you know, uh, an artist is an artist when he, uh, when he, you know, when he limits his imagination or his artistry uh, within the uh, limit of usage of freedom of speech in the most appropriate manner. It is, uh, entertainment is not only about making something, uh, uh, making something for the people to see, but it is also being, uh, you know, being, being responsible and, uh, and trying to bring harmony to the, to, in the, in the way of the film or to spread entertainment, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, message, good message for the society, but not, and not to create rift or dig into or pinch into uh, wounds that uh, that can only create unrest in the society. In 1947, it was decided that India is going to be a secular country. 
and based on that i do not even if you know no matter which party i was i do not believe in films like kashmir files i do not believe in films like kerala story because you can only create unrest between two communities and when i say that when i say that i say it with the fact that uh, you know Kash- what happened in kashmir was definitely not correct uh, but having said that with kerala story with kashmir files we have seen that you know you may have thrown some gory uh, pa- uh, some some facts from the from the pa- from the past but will it be nice if in retaliation someone makes a film on babri masjid you tell me that was broken up by that was also broken down it will only create unrest in a in 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 if pradhan mantri ji is talking about ram rajya this is the last thing that he should promote or he should uh, propagate what but, is the reason but, for it but mrs suprio let me tell can you can i can i ask you a, a question directors who came to Both... it, one one last one last hmm. line okay. when he came to when the foreign directors came to india they saw kashmir files and they said it was a propaganda film and it was pretty nauseating and to see that film through and okay. we are all aware of that so and that, that was that, that was the head of the tomorrow, international tomorrow, yeah, jury tomorrow, who said yes, that yes, but but yes, no can, can i no no can, can i ask can i ask what one thing tomorrow when everything about kerala files is going to be shown uh. i know what the facts are every channel online channel will claim the facts have not been verified and i'm seeing that today itself zaka this is the this is what i'm seeing today no can i can Let's i ask logical. can i ask i don't a, think a there is question. india needs more unrest if, in the society if, right now. if 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 the if people don't like a movie for whatever reason it's it's not been made well or it's not true to facts or it's it's exaggerated whatever it is and the people of this country and the people of bengal wise enough to decide if they don't want to watch something they will not watch something but by banning something you're only making the curiosity of it much much more and two in this day and age when stuff releases on ott how can you say that you know law and order is going to get disrupted or uh, social harmony is going to get disrupted therefore we are banning it in theaters surely state of bengal can't ban this movie tomorrow if it's going to be released on ott so did the information and broadcasting ministry did they agree to everything that has been shown that is being shown on ott do i agree with everything that is shown on ott ott platform do i really believe that my children uh, they go to sleep at 10 in the night and i can watch movies the kind of movies that are showing in a- a- ott did in the bjp government contemplate i was uh, I, i was the deputy of prakash javrekar ji who was the then it minister who was the then ib minister do you think that uh, what is being shown in it it i o t t uh, there should be some kind of censorship in that i am not talking about you know cutting down films and doing some talibani approach no but don't you think that there needs to be some if you are at home and you have your film you know we don't have netflix and everything put on parental guide all the time don't you think there should be isn't it bjp who said that ott films they are going crossing the border and there needs to be some kind of uh, censorship on that didn't you talk about it i think that the things which can spread disharmony in the in the society what is the need of making such films why then why didn't you i'm telling you that tomorrow someone will come up and make a film on babri masjid on okay. godra what will you do about it okay ajay will, will it really take india yeah. as a okay. step forward and i'm saying this as an artist you okay. know if i when i make a song when i make something i want 100% people to see it but when i make that i also keep that in mind that is my content will can it bring those 100 100 people together if it is no okay. then i am not so, being an artist so, i'm not so being let, a filmmaker let, i'm being let, a let responsible person let who's ajay alok to sell controversy to, to garner two, uh, money two, at the box two questions being that's asked clear two questions being that's asked by view. mr suprio one is this is a movie that is out and out uh, you know spreading propaganda and hate and it's going to create communal disharmony in his state therefore the chief minister has decided to uh, ban its screening and secondly he's also saying that artists also have a responsibility it's not just about yeah uh, you know blindly uh, putting up anything and everything that you feel will sell it's also a responsibility towards society how will you respond to both those points he has pretty right but just for his general knowledge for mr babul supriya i like to remind him that there was a movie on babri masjid be 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 there was there was a movie there was a movie please listen, please don't, don't say uh, general knowledge and please listen to no, me. don't there was don't don't there, personal there was, comment there, no there personal was a, there was a movie there was a movie there was a movie on mumbai rights there was a movie on gujarat rights and all the artists performed now in the name of social harmony this movie is not about social harmony or about hindu or muslims this movie is about somebody getting converted to isis terrorist and if they are either they What are terrorist white or they are used as sex slaves 
no, how no, many, no. How many listen, Indians? It's not only about I, I, Hindu women. Babul ji, Babul ji, listen to me. It's not Even only Muslim. about Hindu girls. Even Muslim women. It, it's 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 not only about Hindu girls. Just one month back, Bishop Mar Joseph of Silo Malabar Church in Kerala, he held a meeting of his community and he clearly said that Islamic radicalization is causing a forcible conversion of Christian girls into uh, Muslims. And then they are being taken to Syria for ISIS. Do you think a political party or a chief minister should support terrorist group like ISIS? Can I, can I, it's can I respond about to Hindu. that? It's about Hindu. It's about Christian also. You know, the uh, similar can thing I, can is I, happening. Yeah, yeah, one second, one second, Babu, one second. Yeah. Let him finish, yeah. Can yeah. I, can yeah, I yeah, yeah, let, let him finish. Now, let, calm me. See, I, let me finish. I let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. Okay. No, I'll you show how responsible government you are. If you allow, I'll show how responsible. I'll wait for you to finish. Yeah. How irresponsible thing is this that this movie shows that how a Hindu girl is being forcibly turned into an ISIS activist and she is married to an ISIS terrorist and she is forced into for doing sex slaving? This is the message of the movie. This is not a message about Hindu and Muslims. This is just a for your lawyer opinion, lawyer politics. Politics. You're banning the movie. Stop it. Just you for are your spreading, you are just spreading, you're defaming Kerala. And I think that, you know, uh, defaming the people of Kerala, I mean, nothing politics about it. Stop it. It's not, you, it's not you a story believe, about you know, Kerala. This is happening in Bengal, once sir. Once again, this Nira, is happening in Bihar. Nira. It's not a Kerala story. It, one, this is a global one, story. Okay, one at a time. Uh, let, 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 let Babul, let Babul now respond to it. Let, no, no, no. Let, Babul, Babul, Babul Supriyo, one second. Can I, can I just ask a question? You know, by Please. trying to ban this or trying to, you know, say, oh, it's a uh, movie that is propaganda, a movie that spreads disharmony, are you also not acknowledging the fact that th there a problem like this exists? You asked for, you know, how many such cases have happened. There is an affidavit that was filed. Uh, in fact, in fact, there was a statement that was laid out by the chief minister, then chief minister of the state of Kerala, Mr. V. S. Achyutanandan. Uh, in that, in that statement, and he's a communist chief I minister. He's, yeah, he's not a he's not vision. a BJP or TMC chief vision. minister. In that statement, this is over ten years ago, where he said. There are a hundred such cases of girls being forcibly converted to, to Muslim. Now, the point is that, okay, no one is saying the, the, the scale. The scale may be exaggerated. Maybe the film director, you know, exaggerated the scale. But are you trying to downplay or, or pretend like such a problem does not exist? Because that problem has existed. It has been documented. It has been laid down in the assembly of the state also. I am, I am not at all saying that. You know, let's get into the right perspective. I am saying that there's something called intelligence. There's something called, you know, uh, IB. There's something called where you gather information. And there's so many things happening within the society where, which you, which, what was the chief minister doing? If he's making such a statement inside the uh, Vidhan Sabha, wherever he made the statement, what was he doing to stop it? Just by laid, laying out facts does not mean that you are washing your hands of it. What did he do? If that is the, if that is the net total. Uh, 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 some that he's talking about, what was he doing where the, when the cases were being, or was there the police not loyal to him? They did not bring the facts to his table. So what I'm saying, you know, this kind of, there are so many such problems uh, that happen behind the, behind the scenes, behind the scenes. You bring them, you bring them to the, to the, to the, uh, you know, surface, to the surface and you create surface tension. And I think that the films which have the, which has the, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the the chances or films which will create unrest in the society. What happened? You know, Makul Fidalsin stayed right next to my house, my, my Bombay flat, my Bombay apartment. He stayed next to that. He portrayed Hindu gods in a certain manner. He, he was uh, driven out of the country. So I would say that, you know, in spite of being a, a huge fan of Makul Fidalsin, I met him. He used to come out uh, without shoes. I used to think, what did he is doing in this such heat? But... I would say that, you know, as Makul Fida Hussain, maybe, definitely, there was no need for him. He has, he had the entire world to paint. There was no need for him to pay, put those, uh, you know, those uh, uh, pictures in that manner. Ukraine did something with Hindu gods. Did, the, uh, did, did anyone support it? Do you think even uh, Muslims will support it? Do you think the Christians will support it? We stand up as Indians against that kind of propaganda, against that kind of thing, which defends the country. How much of intelligence do we have about Indian women, whether it is Hindu or it is Muslim, joining the ISIS? We have not really come across such cases where Hindu women needed to be brought back from, uh, from you know, from uh, Syria and all, uh, you know, of, uh, Iraq, uh, who have joined the ISIS. And we know about such cases that existed in the UK. 
Okay. I'm sure there must be such cases in India as well. But I think, you know, from a law and order perspective, deal with that. Why try to uh, spread unrest by, you know, uh, the, did uh, a okay. uh, uh, film may have been made on Godra, may have been made on uh, Babri Masjid. I, I, I really want to know, uh, for general knowledge, did Modi ji allow that to run in Gujarat? May I know? Did, Aj- she, did Aj- he allow the BBC documentary to run in India? Ajay Alok. BBC is a credible <laughs> institution of the world. How the, I'm sorry, you the filmmaker is in. He might be a great film fool. Okay, let, let, let Ajay Alok no, no, uh, respond. I mean, BBC by the same cre- token, you also doctor. banned the BBC yeah. documentary. Ajay yeah, BBC yes, is a yes, credible yes, uh, documentary. Yes, BBC is okay, a let credible thing. Who, you, let, let, yeah, let him, let him one, respond. One let him respond. Ajay Alok, yeah. I'm saying the filmmaker, with due respect to him, he's not a BBC. He's not a BBC. Okay, He's coming up with certain facts. So let Ajay Alok respond, please. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, please respond. It's good, it's good you're speaking like that because that exposes your hypocrisy. And the good people of Bengal will listen to you. Like, this is what is happening in Bengal. I'm happy about it. You spoke. Hypocrisy about what? All right, we just lost the line with Ajay Alok. We'll uh, try and fix that in a moment. Uh, when, uh, you know, when you, when you don't spread Alok in the right direction, Zaka, you're... No, 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 no. One second. I mean, the, it, it, it's poetic it, it, justice. Lines, what hypocrisy? No, no, what, no, no, what lines hypocrisy li- lines do get cut, and in this case, line got cut. <laughs> See, but but, but, but I, I, I come exists, back to the exists. point. No, no, I come back to the yeah. point that you've been a former, uh, uh, you know, INB minister, MOS. Do these bans work? It has never worked. You try to, you know, ban satanic verses. More people ended up reading the book. You tried to ban Da Vinci Code. More people ended up watching that movie. Now you're banning... Uh, yeah, Ajay Alok is back. Yeah, Ajay Alok, yeah, you're responding. Yeah, it, the line got so stuck. Yeah, yeah, let, let, so he's back. He's, let, let, him just, let him just respond, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is a documented fact by none other than the world global bodies situated in UK and US that when they have raided the Syria ISIS, they had captured around 5,500 people from Europe and out of which 78 were Indian girls. And... Out of the 5,500, 4,000 are minors. NIA, NIA is investigating into the case since 2019. Why 2019 NIA has been investigating the case now since the name of ISI that you cannot support a terrorist organization. Okay, okay. No politician can support a terrorist organization. 3,000, but why 30,000 is so bad on the name of criminalism? Because if you ban it, it has a criminal. In the name of the why 30,000? So in the, the name of Muslim appeasement, you are doing it. It's not a matter of number, I'm against to tell you. It's happening in the UK. The UK Home Minister gave a statement yesterday why in the parliament. You know that? But why 30,000? You know that? The UK Home why Minister Fala Bekamin gave a statement in the parliament yesterday. That this you know, British Muslims are converting the Christian and young English girls into uh, Islam. This is a... And Stop they are it. them into Stop ISIS. It. It's not a problem, Stop a it. communal problem that you're converting Stop into Islam. It. It's a problem. You are, going, you are converting. Terrorists, my dear friend. Stop it. You're supporting a Stop terrorist it. organization like ISI. You are, you are in the name of Muslim people. This is the problem. You are and you talk of, and you compare that to BBC see, documentary. See, see. Okay. You compare that why to BBC should I not? documentary. Why, why should I not? Because BBC documentary spoke How out the impact of Gujarat. How can that be compared? That's what it How is. That's the problem for you. This is about the country. That is about a A documentary made when Supreme Court has already exonerated. The then chief minister, now the prime minister, and you can which, and you are you are comparing that with the BBC where documentary. Where is the Supreme Court? And second thing, where is the do you Supreme think Mamta Banerjee is more superior to Supreme Court of this country? Do you think that? A, an elected, an elected government. No, no, no. An do you think she is more, she's is more always, supreme than the Supreme uh, Court? No, no, no. I'm sorry, you're getting into a wrong debate. The, this is, no, I'm not getting into a wrong debate. Supreme Court refused to say that. Supreme High Court had a prolonged hearing. High Court, Kerala High Court had a prolonged hearing. High Court clearly said. Those who want Chilla to watch the movie, let them watch. Those who don't want to watch, Chilla don't Chilla let them watch. Chilla you did it because of appeasing Muslims. Okay, so what, 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 one, one final word. Babu Supriyo, I have to wrap up. No, no, no Babu Supriyo, I think the point he was asking is Supreme Court heard the matter. They refused to give a stay. Kerala High Court had detailed hearing on that matter. They refused to give a stay. If they have decided that this movie is not a threat to society, then why should the chief minister or the state government decide otherwise? I'm sorry, the Supreme Court or the High Court did not say that. They said the Supreme Court or the courts should abstain from getting into banning films. Let me let me let me educate my BJP counterpart. The Supreme Court or the High Court did not say that you cannot stop the uh, from from. They said that the courts to stay away from banning from randomly banning films. That's exactly what the Supreme Court said because there is a censor body, there is a government who is responsible. They are elected by the people. If they think that this can 
create unrest in the life, BB, the life BJP did with BBC. That was about one state. That were some acts during that period. Yet they stopped it. If there is so much of goodwill, okay. if there is, it is about one Sarkar, one particular, a few particular people. If there is so much of goodwill, let the people watch it. All right. Here times, there is no question of the filmmaker on, on or anyone. The people one. are watching time is up. You time time is up. You yeah. cannot stop the Time group. is up on debate one. I want to thank both Babul Sukriyo and, of course, uh, Ajay Alok for joining us. We'll see uh, how this story plays out. Like I said, for now, one thing seems to be clear, that at least outside of Kerala, this movie seems to be doing well commercially at the box office. How far it will go, we'll wait and see. But let's now move on to the other big story, and that is the high-stakes battle for Karnataka. The campaigning has now ended, but the political storm continues. The latest flashpoint is former Congress President Sonia Gandhi's rally in Hubli, which she held over the weekend. While she did expectedly attack the BJP in her speech, the Congress's official Twitter handle quoted Sonia Gandhi as saying, the Congress will not allow attacks on Karnataka's sovereignty. This was the ammunition that Prime Minister Modi and the BJP needed in this last leg before voting. But will this turn out to be a turning point in the election? शब्द का शब्दावली का इस्तेमाल करना यह शो बताता है कि वह मानसिक दिवालिये पर में है वोट की राजनीति के खाते हर कुछ करने के लिए तैयार हैं बिल्कुल जो उन्होंने भाषण दिया है वो संविधान की भावनाओं के खिलाफ है भारत की एकता और अखंडता के लिए खतरा है इसकी जितने भी निंदा की जाए वो कर को खतरे में डालना चाहती है इन टुकड़े टुकड़े गैंग का नेतृत्व कर रही है शी हैज नेवर स्पोकन इन एनीथिंग अबाउट लाइक दैट दैट इज इट्स अ यूट्यूब एंड फेसबुक ट्विटर द वीडियो इज अवेलेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर इज लाइव एंड एज अ मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट आई विल मूव अ प्रिविलेज मोशन अगेंस्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑन दिस लाइव And the BJP went straight to the Election Commission demanding action against Congress and Sonia Gandhi. The party has claimed that Congress has always sided with forces that oppose uh, the Indian state and alleged that there is a well-designed conspiracy to provoke uh, staunch nationalists and that the sole purpose is to disrupt the very being of the Indian state. The BJP called this a bit to garner votes from a few communities or groups. But a transcript of her full speech indicates that Sonia Gandhi did not use the word sovereignty during her 11-minute speech. So the Congress latched on, accusing the BJP of fakery and falsehood. The Congress accused the BJP of denigrating Karnataka's swabhiman or self-respect. The party demanded the Prime Minister should answer on corruption charges against his party's state government and that excuses cannot be the refuge of the BJP. But the problem is... Not so much Sonia Gandhi's speech, it's a tweet that the Congress party put out from its official handle on her speech. Sonia Gandhi campaigned in Hubli after around four years. Soon after, the Congress tweeted about her rally and quoted that, her, that the Congress will not allow anyone to pose a threat to Karnataka's reputation, sovereignty or integrity. Congress leaders claim that there is no proof that these words were spoken by Sonia Gandhi at the rally. They even attacked the BJP for twisting her speech. But the main issue here is that if this tweet misquoted Sonia Gandhi, then why is that tweet still there in the public domain? Why is that tweet not been deleted by the Congress Twitter handle? Meanwhile, the Election Commission of India has written to the INC President Malikarjun Kharge asking him to clarify and rectify this social media post referring to the term sovereignty in the context of the state of Karnataka. Let me now open this up to our guest, Sanju Verma of the BJP is joining us, Adil Singh Bhopra of the Congress, T.R. Prasad Gowda is leader of the JDS and Nistul Ahabar is political editor of the Hindu newspaper. Sanju Verma, uh, the Congress is saying that Sonia Gandhi never used this word uh, sovereignty in the context of Karnataka in her speech in Hubli. Sanju Verma, can you hear me? Z yeah. Yes, I can. Uh, Zaka, you know, uh, let's be very clear about one thing. Uh, that uh, the petition uh, with the election commission, uh, which has been signed by 
top BJP leaders, including Bhupender Yadav, Jitendra Singh, who's a union minister, Anil Baluni, and Om Pathak. It categorically quotes that there is a tweet put out by the Congress handle, and in that tweet, the Congress handle has made a reference to the speech made by Sonia Gandhi on the 6th of May in Hubli. And the Congress handle has said that Sonia Gandhi said that the Congress will not allow anyone to pose a threat to Karnataka's reputation, sovereignty, and integrity. And let me tell you very categorically that a screenshot of the said tweet has also been made available to the Election Commission. So that's that, and there is no room for any opacity on this count. Point number one. Point number two, for the Congress in hindsight to start whining and crying that this is yet another uh, desperate tactic by the BJP, I think, you know, uh, we've really uh, passed uh, that uh, particular phase. Uh, the Karnataka election, I have no qualms in saying it's going down to the wire. And while allegations will fly thick and fast between uh, both the key parties in okay. the fray, the limited point is this. You know, while the Election Commission has the wherewithal to decide what it needs to do, uh, given the material in its uh, possession uh, given by the BJP, my limited point is that the Congress being in bed with terror apologists, being in bed with terror sympathizers, saying we will ban the PFI, very well knowing that the PFI was already banned by the BJP uh, recently in September 2022, going and openly soliciting All right. uh, you know, uh, partnerships uh, with the SDPI. The SDPI, I'm told, has also now decided to withdraw candidates from Mangaluru and Udipi at the behest of the Congress party. So I just want to tell the Congress it is not the BJP that is desperate. It is the Congress which is desperate okay. because we have a report card uh, to Ad show Adil, Adil Boparai, all you needed to do is to ask the INC Twitter handle managers to delete that tweet and say that a mistake has been made. In fact, if you go to Twitter and check the INC India handle, it still is there saying, and it's being attributed to Mrs. Gandhi saying that she said that we will not allow uh, any stain to the reputation or sovereignty of Karnataka. Well, Zaka, I hope I'll be extended the same courtesy as my friend from the Bharatiya Janta Party. Point number one, and I think it is high time that the BJP and their overground workers understand this. They are making a grave allegation against an honorable lady who lost her husband for the unity and integrity of this country. She hails from a family which has shed its blood for the unity, integrity, and sovereignty of this country. So therefore, when you make such an allegation against an honorable lady of the stature of Mrs. Sonia Gandhi, I think it just demonstrates the intellectual bankruptcy and the desperation of the Bharatiya Janata Party, number one. Number two, I challenge the BJP. I reiterate, I challenge the BJP. They must put out audio or video proof where Mrs. Gandhi has said this. Because the reality is she's never said this. So therefore, the Bharatiya Janata Party is literally tilting at the windmills. In a normal democracy, in a running in a robust democracy, any incumbent goes to the people with his report card. He goes to the people with his report card and his vision for the future. What does the Bharatiya Janata Party do? It attacks late Sri Rajiv Gandhi. What the Bharatiya Janata Party does? It you attacks the Congress. Can you, you imagine that? So don't sit here and give me a bhasha of political morality. Well, one second, ma'am. One second. He did not. He did not interrupt you. He did not interrupt you, ma'am. Ma'am, please. He did not interrupt. But Adil, 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 I've given you adequate time. You still haven't answered the question. I haven't. I, I haven't got an answer to the question you asked. Uh, sorry. One second, ma'am. One second. One second. Just Adil on the screen, please. Adil, please answer my question. Why is that tweet still attributed to Mrs. Sonia Gandhi? Ah. Uh, on the INC Twitter page, which means the because, INC stands by this. The Congress party is not answerable to CNN News 18 or the BJP spokesperson. We okay. are not answerable. So to you stand you. by you, you stand here. by the yeah, fact. Yeah, no, no, you stand by yeah, it, yeah, right? Don't me. You yeah, stand yeah, by the tweet, out. right? You yeah, stand yeah, by yeah, it. Don't interrupt me. Hear me out. Hear me out. You're doing a hatchet job, but don't interrupt me. The fact of the matter is that the Prime Minister has to speak about 40% corruption in Karnataka. He has to speak about inflation. He has to speak about unemployment. 
he has to speak about all the issues which the people of Karnataka are grappling with. This is a non-issue. This is absolutely a non-issue which did not warrant a 30-minute debate on prime time no, no. on one of the leading sir, channels sir, of this country. Sir, with due respect, it may, sir, sir, with due respect I don't come and we tell you what places, what briefs you should talk. take and not we take. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would expect this. you to respect the same. I mean, what we choose or not choose, what becomes the talking point in an election campaign is not decided by news channels. It's decided by political parties. And if you know what? What May is an I issue to the Sala, people? Or what is not? An, what, one second. One second. I'm speaking right now. One what is an issue to the people? What is not an issue to the people is not for news channels to decide. To it's for the people to decide. Let me ask. Proof. Let me ask. No, you still haven't answered the question as to why that tweet is still there. But I am that not answerable to you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, no. One second. One second. I'm now moving on to Nistula Hebar, and I want to ask Nistula. You know, you've been there. You've been looking at this campaign, particularly in the last week or so from personal attacks against the Prime Minister, this whole Bajrang uh, Dal controversy, uh, and now, of course, this whole sovereignty controversy. How right. much do these issues, Nistula, in the final week, you know, swing the undecided voter? Do these issues matter at all, or ultimately are the voters of Karnataka going to vote on bread and butter issues? Zaka, it's a, always a mixed thing when it comes to elections. You really never know what the uh, voter takes on board uh, uh, when when they go to vote, uh, whether they go to uh, vote uh, last minute, something happens and changes their mind, or they've already made up their mind six months beforehand, looking at the record of a government that they're going to be voting on. That is something that uh, uh, depends on election to election. In this particular case, though, I would like to say that I don't think that the Congress Party was. Uh, uh, I I don't think that the uh, former Congress Party president was well served by her own party because she didn't say those things because we have also in the Hindu gone through the transcript of uh, what she had uh, said actually in that speech. And I can't understand why the social media team of the Congress party has it on, the, on their Twitter handle even now because that is a question that uh, needs an answer. As far as uh, this becoming an issue, uh, uh, the, the BJP has a very, very good uh, system of communication to their uh, uh, voters and to whoever they want to reach out to in terms of political communication. This was a loose ball. They should not have thrown it to the BJP uh, at the last minute, uh, just on the last day of uh, campaigning. And it really, I don't think Mrs. Gandhi was very well served by her party. Uh, so the Congress will have to be asking these questions, uh, whether this will affect uh, uh, the election, the voting, or anything uh, that I think all survey companies will have to do, uh, will have to take it on board, will have to do surveys, etc., uh, like they did with the Bajrang Dal issue. Uh, when the Bajrang Dal bit came in the Congress's manifesto, there were uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, hue and cry. The BJP did take it on board and went aggressive with it in certain areas of Karnataka where the Hindutva project is. Um, uh, alive and well, and people vote on the basis of identity issues, Hindu identity issues, and where SDPI and PFI are issues that affect voting uh, um, uh, in the population. Uh, uh, the Congress's own surveys and other surveys found that uh, this Bajrang Dal issue has resonance there, not so much in other places, and it could possibly okay. also lead to some sort of a consolidation for of the Muslim vote for the Congress vis-a-vis -vis the JDS, because I believe, Zaka, this Karnataka election, everybody has their own uh, uh, strength, areas of strength, but uh, the majority, the party which gets the majority, that will be decided, I think, through the 59 seats of Southern Karnataka, where it's Congress versus the JDS. All right, and that's an area where the BJP has also been trying to make inroads for multiple elections now for a number of years. Whether or not they'll be able to do that in the Vokaliga heartland, we'll wait and see. But I want to ask, T.R. Prasad Gowda, it's a good time to ring in the senior JDS leader. Uh, you know, Mr. Prasad Gowda, particularly in the last one week or so, what is happening is because of this high decibel campaign, national leaders of the BJP, Congress all descending on Karnataka and most of these national issues taking preeminence, it seems like the two national parties are squeezing out the third player, which is your party, the JDS. Actually, uh, to be honest with you, Sujakov, uh, these two national parties, 
Congress and uh, uh, Bharatiya Janata Party, they are uh, uh, exhibiting, uh, people can very well understand they are, they are exhibiting their own egos. They are, trying, they are trying to insert their own egos into the state of Karnataka. At this point, uh, at this hour, what the people of Karnataka requires, require, uh, they are not concentrating on that. And because, because uh, although the, though uh, BJP has ruled this, uh, our state for last three and a half years, they have forgotten, forgotten uh, the governance, they have forgotten the law and order, everything they have forgotten. They are, they are bringing national leaders just to avoid, uh, just to uh, uh, cover up all their, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking us. Uh, and, and as well as Congress also, Congress also uh, uh, making uh, this kind of statements. Uh, what I wanted to tell you at this hour is, people of Karnataka requires a, a, a local state leader like H.D. Kumar Swami, who can take care of the people's minimum uh, needs, okay. so who can take care of their agricultural problems, who can take care of their health problems, who can take care of day-to-day uh, -day problems. That is the one, one person can deliver it. That is only Kumar okay. Swami. So let me Kumar ask uh, Sanju Varma of the BJP, both Congress All and these, JDS spokespersons are making the same charge against you that by talking about you know, sovereignty or Bajrang Bali or personal attacks on the Prime Minister, the issues that matter to the voters of Karnataka are price rise, uh, inflation, lack of jobs, uh, the corruption allegations against uh, your state government. Why, why, are, why are those issues not being addressed by the BJP? Zaka, you asked me a lengthy question. Now I need two minutes uh, to uh, respond uh, without beating around the bush. And I just want to tell the Congress panelists, like you are not answerable to the BJP. The BJP is certainly not answerable to the Congress party which under the ages of Rahul Gandhi has lost 5-0, 50 out of the 54 small and big elections in the last nine years. So please, uh, you know, don't sit here and wax eloquent. Uh, now, I will just say a couple of things. I'm glad you asked me what you did, because the fact is that the BJP has a report card which, is, which it is particularly proud of, and I say this with a lot of confidence, because be it be the Terminal 2 of the Kempengaura International Airport, be it Phase 1 of the 119-kilometer Bengaluru Mysore Highway, be it the permanent campus built at a cost of 850 crores, I'm talking of IIT Dharwar, be it the upcoming airport uh, for which the DPR process has been completed, the Raichur Airport, be it renovation of the uh, Bengaluru Mangaluru Highway, be it the fact that, you know, in the last two years alone, we have given 32,000 crores, which was the sugarcane arrears to the farmers of Mandya. And let me tell you, Prime Minister Modi is the first big leader to have visited Mandya in the last 41 years. What has Sonia Gandhi done? What has Rahul Gandhi done? We did not give a ticket to K. Ishwarappa because Santosh Patil made allegations, though they could never be proved. But the Congress has given a ticket from Kanaka Pura to D.K. Shiv Kumar, who's facing money laundering charges and charges of corruption to the tune of owning disproportionate assets of 700 crores and more. So for the Congress to sit here and give a bhashan on how great they are and how okay. they are actually working on an anti-corruption agenda is like the pot calling the kettle black. Uh, and before uh, Adil, I will just say this. Yeah. Just two seconds. I will just end me, with what PM Modi said in the Lok Sabha. Give me 50% of the time which you Now you please be quiet. Think. You gave a lecture. And I will call you fair. Can I finish? Yeah, yeah, yeah finish, 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 finish quickly, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I will just finish by quoting what Prime Minister Modi said on the floor of the Lok Sabha a couple of weeks back because it sums up the Congress mood. The fact is, Tumhare pao ke niche zameen nahi hai. Tumhare pao ke niche zameen nahi hai. Lekin kamal to ye hai. Lekin kamal to ye hai ki tumhe yakin nahi hai. The ground from under your feet okay. has completely vanished. And you sit here and actually throw a gauntlet at the BJP. Okay, Adil, uh, Adil you know, when you here. make the corruption allegation, fact is that nothing was proven against Ishwarappa. Uh, when you make the corruption allegation, also people are turning around and asking, but what about all those corruption allegations against the UPA when the UPA was in power? Is corruption a political weapon when the Congress uses it against the BJP? The sting has been taken out of it because... Uh, the allegations from 2012 to 2014 are still very much fresh in people's memory. 
Zaka, all the allegations which you and your friends made against the UPA government have been demolished. 2G has held to be a case of a policy decision. That 1.76 lakh crore rupees which you and your colleagues were tom-toming from the rooftops has been held to be false. There is a judgment by a special CBI court. I don't want to go down that path because that doesn't serve either my cause or the What BGP's. about National Herald scam? Again, she's Rahul Gandhi is out on Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. No, 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 that there is a 40% commission Sarkar in Karnataka. It is arguably the most corrupt state government in the history of this country. The Prime Minister doesn't have a word to say on this. Uh, a gas cylinder used to cost 450 rupees. Today it costs 1150 rupees. You don't hear a, a whisper from the Prime Minister. Today unemployment is touching 20%. You don't hear a whisper from the Prime Minister. The real issues facing this country are being brushed under the carpet with the aid of the media and the Bharatiya Janata Party's disinformation campaign. The people of Karnataka are smart. Our voter is smart. They understand. They can separate the wheat from the chaff and they will give a resounding answer. And finally, to the Bharatiya Janata Party, this election is not about Mr. Modi. This election is about the aspirations of six and a half crore residents and voters of Karnataka. Please come out of your I, me, my syndrome. Okay. It is not about narcissism. Okay. It is about We've got to wrap delivering it up on that. the promises of the voters. The campaign drums have fallen silent. Now it's over to the people. It's the people of Karnataka, the six and a half crore electorate that has to decide who they want at the helm of affairs, politically speaking, for the next uh, five years in their state. Count, po polling day is going to be on the 10th, that's Wednesday, in a, a day from now, and we'll have live coverage starting 7 a.m. on Wednesday. And, of course, the big day is counting, which is this coming Saturday, the 13th, and we'll have the best election team on TV right here on CNN News 18. So don't forget to tune in both on the 10th and on the 13th, 7 a.m. onwards. Thank you for tuning in. The, um, uh, the officials are saying, but at the same time, as you said, there are people belonging to one family. So if all of them um, were in that boat together, then that again is a concern. So they're still looking if there is in the nearby areas also. Uh, and we, what we heard from locals is that uh, one family has uh, said that one young boy is missing. So they are uh, looking for that also. So we're not really sure whether the numbers will increase right now because the officials are also not sure, but they don't want to leave it. They want to do a thorough search of the entire area. All right, Neetu. And also, has any ex gratia been announced by the government for those who lost their lives in this uh, accident? Uh, no, uh, from uh, the, the Prime Minister, while tweeting yesterday, has uh, announced uh, this, but uh, uh, so far from the state government, we we haven't seen. But as I said, the Chief Minister is heading that way. It is a major tragedy, and once he uh, reaches there, uh, we'll have to see. But as of now, um, what we know is that the Chief Minister is headed that way. He has immediately given directions for the district administration. Two ministers were put on duty. Uh, health uh, minister also uh, uh, were uh, doing whatever they can to release the bodies of these people at the earliest. So all those activities uh, are ongoing. Government has uh, uh, stayed all their, uh, stopped all their official programs today um, because of this tragedy, because uh, paying uh, their respect to uh, all those who have lost their lives. And today um, they are observing this day uh, in uh, uh, memory of those people who have lost their lives. Also, Neetu, as per reports, the boat was plying beyond the official deadline of 5 p.m. when it sank around 7 p.m. yesterday. So, who is likely to be held accountable for this? Uh, uh, definitely, the uh, boat owner will be held accountable for this because this has this uh, this mistake or this uh, this has cost us, uh, cost life for so many people. So the official time, uh, well beyond that, uh, they were uh, going. This happened around 7:30 p.m. and this was the last service, is what we were told. But even then, it, it was going well beyond the time that has been given. And as I said, that definitely was a major issue in the rescue operation. 
patients also they were having the problem with the light initially when they reached there so that has hampered the rescue operations also the boat owner will definitely be booked uh, uh, for this uh, is uh, what we are understanding some big breaking news that's coming in from the state of Kerala where at least 22 people have drowned after a houseboat carrying around 40 passengers capsized at the Tannur area of Kerala's Mallappuram on Sunday evening now the death toll stands at 22 and more people are believed to be trapped under the boat the efforts are on to bring the capsized boat to the shore Meanwhile NDRF team has also been deployed at the spot so we have this breaking news coming in from Kerala where at least 22 people have uh, drowned after a houseboat carrying around 40 passengers capsized at the Tannur area of Kerala's Mallappuram on Sunday evening CNN news 18's Neetu is joining us to give us more details Neetu can you tell us more about this incident that took place in Mallappuram yesterday See, last night at around 7:30 is when this unfortunate incident had happened—a shocking tragedy. What we know, what is officially confirmed, is that 22 people have lost their lives. Eight people have been rescued who were in the boat, and they are in the hospital. Uh, and the condition of four is uh, pretty serious, is what we are understanding at the moment. Now, the biggest trouble is for the officials also is that they're not really sure how many people were in that boat. uh because uh, there the, there are there were small children these children need not take ticket so that is something which they are concerned about so this morning also what the district collector said is that they feel that there were around 35 people the search the rescue operations is still going on but exactly for them to give out a number they really don't know how many people were there in that boat so around 35 is what they are think uh, expecting is what the district collector of malappuram has said this morning now the chief minister is heading towards kanur two ministers the abdur rahman and uh, mohammad riaz were given the responsibility for coordinating so this incident happened at around 7:30 pm this boat uh, it is it has two decks the upper deck where you can stand and the lower deck uh, where the passengers uh, can sit so there were a lot of people it is vacation time and it was a sunday evening so there were a lot of people including a lot of children and even in these 22 people that uh, died there are children in that so at this moment also the and what happened last night is that it happened at around 7:30 pm so definitely the lighting was a major issue uh, they were not able to really uh, uh, dive into the re- rescue operations immediately at the moment because the lighting was a major issue the fishermen in the area along with the boats came out and tried to help the fire force the police all of them tried to come in but initially what uh, what when we spoke to people on the field who were a part of the rescue operation 